30 Odd Minutes is sponsored in part by Digital Dowsing. Who are you powered by? For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Oh, welcome. Hey, good to have you on 30 Odd Minutes. Welcome aboard the mothership where we are hovering live right over southern England. You can see crop circles behind us below. We just made them. Ha! Just kidding. We didn't really do that. Want to say hello to Matt and Andrew, of course, in the control center. How are you guys? We're doing excellent today, Jeff. Good. Damn good, Jeff. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Have a good week? Very good week. Excellent. A little ghost hunting. What happened? Uh, (laughs) We had some pretty interesting hits from uh, two uh, psychic mediums we took into the house and heard footsteps that could not be accounted for. Yeah. So they hit you? Uh, no. No, they gave us hits. Oh, uh, Verbal okay. hits. Yeah. Psychic hits. All right. Well, good stuff. Hey, I do understand we got a little correspondence this week, Matt. Yes, we do, actually. Linda from Bellingham. Sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. And we're back. There. All right. Linda from Bellingham, Massachusetts, wants to know what pub we hang out after each mission. Oh, yeah. That's classified information. That's yeah. uh, we can't give away our secret beer base. Sorry, Linda. Look for us though. You may find us. There's only so many places that serve in Bellingham, so That's process true. of elimination. That's true. Right. And I uh, want to send out the greetings to Lehigh Valley in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, because they are uh, watching us on RCN TV out there. So All right. thank you guys. Very cool. Excellent. Howdy. New pickup, new pickup. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Eastern Pennsylvania. Great to have you with us. All right, so tonight's uh, topic is crop circles, and our own Dr. Dreck did a little exploration, and, and he may have found some meaning. Let's, uh, let's see what he found out. Greetings, Lord Balls. Dr. Dreck here. And we've been talking about uh, crop circles. Now, we know that some of them are actually done by people that admit to it or they're hoaxes or whatever. But there's that certain percentage that we don't know who did it, where did it come from, how did it happen. Well, I think I got the answer. Last night, I made myself a little midnight snack of a bowl of cream of wheat. But then the phone rang, and I went to answer it, and then I forgot about the cream of wheat and went to bed. The next morning, I woke up. And here's what the cream of wheat looked like on the table. Yes, crop circles in my cream of wheat. (laughs) So I think I'm onto something here. So I set up a time-lapse photography camera and then repeated the experiment, left a clean bowl of cream of wheat on the table. And the next morning I woke up and then I saw that the crop circle had happened again. And here's what the time-lapse photography revealed. Artistic cockroaches are making crop circles. So the big ones obviously have to be made by giant cockroaches. It's so simple that even the simple-minded will think it's simple. So there you have it. Now we know where crop circles come from. Giant cockroaches. It makes so much sense when he says it that way. Now, is there any point in doing the show? I I guess good night. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) All right. It was a good show. Start the engines. All right. (laughs) Crop circles. Are they just random patterns in the field? Are they signs from some form of intelligent life, higher intelligence? If they are a sign, what do they mean? Tonight's guest had an out-of-body experience while lying in a crop circle five years ago, and since then she's gone on to create several documentary films on the subject, including The Wake Up Call, Anybody Listening, 2012, We're Already In It, and Four Stories, One Event, Other Worlds. Beaming to the mothership live from Colorado, please welcome Patty Greer. Patty, how are you this evening? Great. What a hysterical entry you did. Well, it's, it's good to have you here aboard our spaceship. This may be your first time. We'll be gentle. Um, some of those crop circles we will take credit for, but only a few, only a small minority of them. Tell us, what happened? Where, what were you doing? Where were you laying down in a crop circle? What happened? Man, it begins. We have a little audio problem here. 
We just lost our audio. Patty, can you try again? Can you hear us? Just a little bit. Yep, you're coming in. All right. Oh, there you are. There you are. He's back. He's back. (laughs) Sometimes they play games, those little circle makers. The real ones, there's just sometimes that cameras don't work. And in the crop circles, gear just bails out. So because you've got the good one on the wall, I think they're going to be playing this time. Oh, well, very good. All right, so you were telling us before you cut out, uh, what happened when you were that, that first time? You're laying down in a crop circle and you have an out-of-body experience? Where, when? What happened? It was in 2007, and it was the second summer I'd gone to be in the crop circles, but I went this time with the plan to be there nine weeks. And I laid in a lot of crop circles. Everybody's got their different method of how they like to do it. Some people like to go in and they go with their wands and their magnetometers and they're all scientific. I go straight to the center, I lay down, I close my eyes and I go for the feel of what it is. But when you walk into a formation, you can feel the vortex. This almost like a dome that's over the crop circle. And before you get to it, you can feel the energy change. And all the people I've taken into the crop circles have also noticed that change of field, that energy change of field. So it's noticeable there's something that is not normal in the area where the crop circles are made. And it goes on for quite a while. It can be weeks later that you'll still feel the energy within the crop circles. Uh, Even after hundreds of people have walked through them, the energy doesn't change. There's something not normal. And when they test the wheat, it actually has higher food value. The roots go deeper. Everything has more depth of energy in the crop circles. It's an amazing topic, one we've broached only once before. So tell us, how long have people been talking about crop circles? How long have these things been here? Since the 1700s, we've had documentaries, um, documentary statements, people that have commented that they've seen them in the field. Back then, they called them the fairy rings. Okay. And... Uh, so that's kind of a funny way to uh, remember them. They also thought they were made by devils. But in all the recent years, since the 1980s, we've really heard of most of the crop circles in the world in the center of Wiltshire, England. And Wiltshire, England has the Avery Stone Circle, which is one of the oldest ancient stone circles in all of Europe. And people have come there for thousands of years to do sacred ceremony. So there's a higher vibration there. There's Silvery Hill. These are beautiful pictures of the Avery Stone Circle. There's also Stonehenge to the east and the town of Glastonbury to the west. So we've got a lot of ancient sacred energy and a lot of people praying for many years. There's also a lot of water in this area, and 97% of the crop circles happen to be sitting over an aquifer. So there's something about these balls of light that are creating them, and the water underneath that makes... Uh, Wiltshire, England, the perfect canvas for so many crop circles, more than anywhere else documented in the world to date. Right, and so this got you, of course, grabbing your camera and trying to document these things. We're going to play a trailer right now from your uh, Crop Circles 2010 update, The Wake Up Call, and, uh, and check this out. It's beautiful. We'll be right back. In life, we are grounded, but in our dreams, we can fly. Go where we please, no need to land And stop, we never try Quiet your mind and just feel the breeze Cause in dreams we conquer mountains and land on top of the trees Feel so free, only stopping to breathe Every door is open, no lock and no key Realizing I'm free, I just fly Yeah, I just fly because they had certain military significance. In other words, they were being testing something from outer space or whatever. <laughs> and they very cleverly linked this to the fact that this is the center of such an ancient civilization. 
Up until this time, there's been no cre credible evidence to suggest that that formation was anything but the result of some kind of paranormal event. Um, some people told me that it's radioactive inside the uh, circles. Some people said that the cameras have failed to work. And that moment of magic, that expression of perfection and information is placed there in the field, just like that. It's a picture of the truth. It's literally It's all about being in that moment and focusing and intending that every moment be brighter and more significant than the other. Consider this a wake-up call to listen. An invitation to experience something that few humans will ever get to see. Crop circles. And we're back with Patty Greer. Patty, it's amazing. They're beautiful. These, these are, are incredible works that, that, are, that are just gorgeous. And uh, I imagine once you start looking into a subject, I mean, I know from my own experience, uh, lots of people come forward. So, so talk about the, kind of the evolution from just a few years ago, 2007, to, to where you're, you know, you're seeing these things, people are coming forward. It, it has more meaning than just a visual, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, the common wisdom amongst the crappies, which is the crop circle people, is that these crop circles are the first physical manifestation of ET communication that humans can physically see. So it's almost like they're leaving sticky notes in the fields, and they're using England because the area is so wet that the, the crop will last for two months, three months of summer. And the, when they lay a crop circle down in a field, this subliminal information, this subconscious information, which is coming through sacred geometry, when you look at a crop circle, it relaxes the brain because it's like a piece of art, it's like a flower, it's symmetrical. And so when you look at it, it does something that you don't have to think about, but it, it does help the human mind take in the information and have some kind of an evolutionary pitch from it. What it has been spoken about is that a lot of the crop circles are giving us information about 2012, planetary shifts, and a lot of the crop circles recently have been showing us these ancient languages that haven't been seen for hundreds of years, laid into a field of wheat, 1,500 feet of an ancient language laid into brittle wheat. I mean, it's really hard to fathom that when you look at this beautiful picture behind you, out to a spaceship window, that that is hundreds of perfectly laid circles. There's a centerpiece standing up of wheat, and everything else is swirled down. Right. It happens in a second. The, and you actually, all of those are pre-planned, and they just happen in a second. There you go. Yeah, you sent us this photo of, of the center of one of the circles, and you can see, I mean, even down to the, the smallest stock, it's quite intricate. This was probably my favorite crop circle center ever. I'm so delighted you're showing this photo because this is one of about 60 centerpieces. And this was a formation in a place called Avebury Treslow, right near the stone circle. And uh, we saw it the night it happened, and it was absolutely stunning. But my partner and I got up at 6.30 in the morning, went into the crop circle to film it when there were no people in there. And every center was out of this world. Good way to put it. Yeah. But that one in particular, it looked like an Indian village teepees, and then a center teepee. I mean, it was just phenomenal to think that that happened in three hours of darkness, along with 60 other centers happening that were each different. Nothing was the same. And in a general, generic, if there's such a thing, crop circle, there would be like one nice plume up, and then everything else is swirled down around it. But periodically, when circle makers are in a um, more timely mood, they lay crop circles down with masterpiece centers, and that one you just showed, in my opinion, is one of the best. Right, and you sent us a few others. Here's one, uh, the Eastfield Circle. Um, just looks incredible. I mean, the, the amount of, you know, the amount of detail in some of these things. Uh, what, what's the message? What do you think when you see this? Well, you know, the interesting thing about even crop circle experts, I see celebration. Of course, the partner has lost its upper body and head, <laughs> right. but the first party, in my opinion, is looking like she's celebrating. She's got her arms up and she's dancing. And the interesting thing that I've learned in the last uh, six months when I made my most recent movie, I met people that actually saw the orange balls of light over the same crop circle in this field 
on July 29, 2010. This is the strangest story I've ever heard, but um, these people saw these orange balls of light, and then out of those orange balls came these illuminated light beings with right. arms, legs, and a head, and they were lit up. It's the strangest story, and these guys were absolutely sure what they saw. The guy from Belgium said, my eyes don't lie. You know, I'm a rational man, and I know what I saw. Right, right. Actually, Patty, hold on that, because we're going to show that clip uh, right after the news break, and then we'll talk about this a little bit more, because I want people to see exactly what you're talking about. Um, you sent us another one, too, uh, Butterfly 2007. And, and sometimes they're just they're emulating shapes in nature. And, and uh, I mean, is there a message there? Is there any chance this is a naturally occurring phenomena that's just coming from within as opposed to without? Well, I think that's a great question. Um, in 2009, we were delivered all kinds of bird formations in a row and fish formations in a row. Now, typically, they're more scientific, uh, mathematical, geometric, but these were specifically animals, like you're looking at a butterfly. It's obvious. It's true. So these were birds, numerous birds and fish, numerous fish, and they were chasing each other, or they were just fish looking at you. And within weeks, the BP uh, disaster happened in the Gulf of Mexico, killing millions of birds and millions of fish. And it seemed to me that it was clearly a message mm -hmm. in advance of what was about to happen. Right. They were given a lot of information through the crop circles that has been very timely. And when you showed the celebration one, the, the, that one was on um, 7707, that was the date of it, and, and people were up on the hill with the cameras, and somebody felt that he got this flash of light, and then that was the crop circle in the morning, and I was there on the hill that night. Right, So it was yeah. pretty exciting, a lot of night watch. It, it's amazing, uh, you know, too, I, I started thinking a lot about this, you know, I, I think about the subjects as we get ready for each mission each week, and, and I thought about other shapes in nature, that are, that are truly beautiful. Uh, something as simple as a snowflake, for example, uh, if you look at it, it's mathematic, it's symmetrical, it's, it's incredibly beautiful. I mean, there you go, each one is unique. And so we do have examples in nature, crystalline effects and things like that, uh, that come up that, that are you know, like this, but, but not on this scale. This is something totally different. And when we come back, Patty, right after our news break, uh, we're gonna talk about some of the other causes and, uh, and we'll be right back after the news. The Loch Ness Monster has made another appearance, only this time in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Nessie has recently shown up in the form of gorilla art as a sculpture placed in the Chippewa River to look like the famous Scottish monster out for a swim. Dan Bowman, a spokesman for Wisconsin's Department of Natural Resources, said the art piece is an illegal obstruction and needs to be removed by those who put it there. A local business said they would be interested in purchasing the faux monster to place in their retention pond. So bring the whole family down to the retention pond and get a picture with Nessie. Sort of. In other news, Bigfoot should really think about avoiding the state of Texas. The question of whether or not it is legal to hunt and kill Sasquatch in the Lone Star State was put to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department by one John Lloyd Scharf. After consulting the law books, the department's chief of staff, L. David Sinclair, responded to Scharf's inquiry with the answer, yes. Since Bigfoot isn't listed as a game animal in the state of Texas, it could be hunted legally on private property with the landowner's permission. If messing with Texas isn't a good idea, wait till someone tries to mess with Sasquatch. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you, Andrew. And we're back with Patty Greer talking about crop circles. Patty, something else in prep for the show this week. I, one question that I'm sure you get all the time is, what's your favorite Led Zeppelin box set? Is it this one by any chance? Yes? No? Yes, indeed. Of course, course it is. So this he stuff makes... But this makes popular culture. I mean, there actually is a point other than showing a really cool Led Zeppelin cover. Uh, you know, this stuff makes popular culture. People know what we're talking about when we talk about crop circles. They come up again and again. And, of course, there's claims of, of hoaxing. And some of them are indeed hoax, hoaxes. We've got Doug and Dave, which we have photos of them. And, you know, these guys um, are, are well-known in England. But... But they couldn't have done them all, correct? Uh, absolutely correct. And frankly, the night that they might have made three in England, it would have been too amazing for them to have made one in France, one in Belgium, one in Holland, and, and one in Indonesia. I mean, unless they're really traveling by the speed of light, those guys are rocking, rocking the planet. They've got tricks we need to learn. 
Right, right. And and people may have seen video where, where folks put ropes around their neck attached to boards and they kind of stomp down the wheat. But there's a difference, correct? I mean, in, in that case, the wheat is broken as opposed to bent. Absolutely. You did your homework. Oh. I should have sent you a photo of the bent nodes, which are these bubbles in the stem of a piece of wheat. In the real crop circles, all of the wheat has a bent node, right where the wheat bends at a 90 degree angle, next to 100,000 of its friends, pieces of wheat. And they're all, for some reason, laid in perfect symmetry next to each other. But this, this something happens that heats up the wheat, and the wheat is just a stem of wheat, but it bubbles out, something heats it up quickly, and then it bends over. And that's what creates the image from the air. You can really see the pattern. But when you're in the fields, all you see is perfectly flowing wheat in circles and walls that are just clean as could be. Just brisk, straight walls. It's just almost too perfect. It's, right. it's eerie inside. And now our own Matt Moniz uh, has been studying crop circles for a long time. He's been in England. And I want to ask him a question real quick. Matt, uh, what's the freakiest thing that happened to you inside of a crop circle? Um, I got freaky inside of a crop circle. Does that Matt count? Moniz, ladies and gentlemen, he did indeed bed down a lady in inside of a crop circle. And that's worth a round of applause, I think. <laughs> All right, she so, passed out. So, Matt, you have some thoughts, though, on, on, uh, on, on the people that are doing the hoaxing. You've seen the difference yourself, right? Uh, yeah, I was in England in 92 when they had the hoaxing competition. Right. And uh, every group that ever claimed to, you know, be responsible for, you know, the formations was involved in this competition in this known field and the winners by the way were a pair of newbies that had never done it before that were from i believe france but uh it took them six hours to create this creation but what was really interesting is that night in all of the surrounding towns the most amount of crop circles that had ever been formed in the most complex happened that night and i know i was there Right. Both at the competition and so everybody was, was accounted for. for while these were, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the hoaxers were hoaxing, and, and somehow others turn up. So, um, and and you have a story about that too, right, Patty? Something similar? Uh, yeah, but I don't want to talk about my getting freaky in a circle story. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't going to spring that one on you, but we don't judge here on thirty odd minutes. I mean, you know, whatever everybody's judge into. Me a good one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, understood. Okay, so. so uh, one night I was at the Black Horse Pub, which is a pub in, in Wiltshire, yep. and there were people behind me that were drinking heavily, and these three guys were getting very, very drunk. And they were circle makers, human circle makers, or seemingly human, and they'd been in a crop circle that night making uh, a formation, laying down the weed, and an actual ball of light whizzed past them, scared them to death. The one guy wet his pants, the other two were so scared, they all three of them went running out and soaking wet one guy, they went to the black horse and started drinking and didn't realize that there was a filmmaker with two ears sitting behind them, kind of leaning back, going, really, isn't that interesting? Huh. So, drunk crop circle <laughs> makers, I actually believe we have a photo of what they made. Take a look. Does that look like... <laughs> I, I think uh, that, thank you to the internet, thank you to our, uh, thank you to our, our, our alert oddballs out there who are sending in this great stuff. And uh, that's from Jen DaCosta. Thank you, Jen, for your prize. Okay, uh, real quick, I want to get to this video clip. Um, talk us through this. We're going we're gonna to just start it. We're going to talk over it here for a little bit. You talked about these balls of light that people are seeing over the fields. Um, you know, what are we seeing here? Well, this is absolutely amazing footage. And in my newest movie, you actually see the balls of light up close. And the most startling thing is that my friend and I were doing Nightwatch one night in 2008, and we had these photos that we took of the balls of light over East Field, and they had like this band-aid of black wrapped around, or a band of black wrapped around the ball of light. And we were trying to figure out what it was, and when the ball turned again, it looked like a V in the ball. So it looked like some kind of a doorway. And sure enough, when I interviewed these guys, they said that the, um, the light beams came out a doorway in the ball of light. And there was a woman that had the experience also. I was, also, I was she trying to, 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 to find uh, rational explanations for it. So that's why I started to think, well, maybe people aren't yet ready for the truth. Oh, we definitely saw them. No doubt. What, what, what they are, we don't know, but we saw them. All of a sudden, 
there were like arms and legs coming out of the lightning bolt. So still illuminating, kind of humanoid shape, but in light form. My, my, my eyes don't lie. No. It's just my rational mind that <laughs> tries to, to find a rational explanation. This uh, like an uh, orange flame, and it was behind the circle, in the field behind it. And then she said, the circle is not finished, they are going to finish it later on. This crop circle appeared in East Field on July 29th, and all of us went into it. The orange balls of light were seen near this crop circle over East Field. The following day, the formation was indeed larger. Phase 3 appeared on August 3rd, and the message was completed. They offer the information. Your perception is up to you. Patty Greer, so for you, this is a very spiritual endeavor. This isn't so much math and science. What's the greater meaning that, that we're getting from, from all these signs all over the planet? Well, I think the interesting thing is that what's happening now, we are moving into a new paradigm of consciousness, and a lot of people are having interactions with extra-dimensional beings or ETs or little greys or whatever uh, species that they seem to be running into, but a lot of people are having ET experiences. And I think it's becoming more and more abundant now. What happened to me in the crop circle was extremely strange. And the story does go on, but I didn't go there to make movies. I knew nothing about making movies. And six months after laying in a crop circle, I made an hour and a half full feature documentary pretty much by myself, which is frankly stupid. And I made five in the last five years without knowing anything, which is kind of nuts because I paid for all the editing myself. And also now I'm here realizing the world is these kind of unfortunate distributors that don't want to share with the filmmaker the benefit of making movies. And I've got these great films kind of locked in a freezer. And what, what people need to know is the truth of what's going on. Doug and Dave, that's a great example of what's going on in, in press, is that that many people really believe that there's humans making the great crop circles. The one behind you is a fine example, no way on earth. Could that have been late in the three hours of darkness in England? And the farmers know their fields. They're going through their fields. So if uh, I do believe I'm the only filmmaker on the planet that's got the real balls of light over the crop circles, the proof that they're making the crop circles, because I'm kind of fearless and foolish, but I believe that I was kind of chosen to do this work because I had time on my hands is a funny way to put it. But for me to spend 15 hours a day for five years making movies, it's a very odd thing for me to do, and the movies are really interesting, and the information is all scary true. So if people are interested, they should go and peek at my website, which is pattygreer.com, right. P-A-T-T-Y-G-R-E-E-R.com. I have five movies, and they are all way out there, but I do believe that without doing any research or watching other people's movies and reading books, that I'm bringing first-hand information straight from what the real circle makers want people to know. I do believe that the movies have nothing but truth in them and the imagery because all I like to do is take photos. I mean, when you see how beautiful they are, why wouldn't you? Right. So it's, it's a beautiful study. Excellent. Patty Greer, thank you so much for joining us here on 30-odd minutes aboard the mothership. It's an incredible topic. We will have links to your website for Mars, of course, if people want to find out more information about you or your films. And, uh, and the question goes on. Of course, southern England is not the only place for crop circles. They show up in America and, and really every continent except uh, Antarctica. Right, Matt Moniz? And, uh, and And who knows? Maybe we'll see one in the snow one of these days. Okay, folks, we are right up against the out of time. The engines are heating up, and we got to blast out of here. Until next time, stay odd. <laughs> Thank you.